Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on Smith Chart. For this video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually add a shun inductor or capacitor okay, through the emittance on the Smith Chart. On the Part 3 series, I actually discuss how we can actually add the series L or C onto the impedance charge of the Smith Chart. So for this video, I'm going to concentrate on shun L or C onto the emittance charge. So this will be the objective for this video. This will be the part four series discussion on the Smith chart. The rest of the earlier video, or maybe even in the future video, for example, I'm going to discuss how can we actually do a impedance matching using the Smith chart. Okay, all this video, okay, I have put the playlist under the description. Take a look on those video if you're keen to know more about Smith chart. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please let me know by sending me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also feel free to give me comments okay, so that my quality of this channel can be improved. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, before I actually touch on the example, let's do a very quick recall regards on the Smith chart. Okay, I hope you still remember how to differentiate impedance charge and also emittance charge. In short, you can see over here for impedance charge, the circles actually concentrate more on the right hand side, as you can see from here. Okay, which means that these are all the value they start off. Okay, so in a bigger number, and then they slowly start to decrease in terms of the resistivity. Okay, as for emittance over here, you can see that they basically start off at a bigger number, and also they also start to reduce, as you can see from here. So in short, for impedance, the circle typically start off from the right-hand side. As for the emittance, the circle actually start off more on the left-hand side. Okay, so this will be the key distinct between impedance and emittance charge. Next. Okay, I also want to quickly mention some facts about impedance and emittance charge. As for impedance charge, which I utilize on part 3 series discussion on the Smith chart, you can see that this is the resistivity line. So if I have a plus J, which means that it's above the resistivity line, and if it's minus J, I actually has lower than the resistivity line. So this is the characteristic for impedance charge. As for emittance charge, is totally different. Okay, so again, let's assume that this is a resistivity line. Okay, so what happened here is basically if I have a minus J, okay, they are actually are above this so-called resistivity line. If it's a plus J, they are actually below the resistivity line. Okay, so over here, you can see the key distinct between impedance charge and emittance charge. In short, they basically have a reverse behavior. So you can see this is plus, you can see this is minus. Again, this is minus, this is plus. And beside that, you can actually see that a lot of characteristics, they actually behave in an opposite manner, okay, which I will go through step by step. Okay, so let's start by discussing the example four. Okay, for example, we are given this emittance. Okay, remember this, this is an emittance rather than impedance. So you take a look, this is basically the characteristics of a emittance, okay, which is a unit of S. Okay, so over here, you can see that basically for emittance, when they are actually in this form, they are actually connected in parallel. So over here, I I just quickly draw this in terms of parallel. 1.2k okay, plus j04. Okay, what is the final impedance after a shunt inductor? Okay, so what they do is basically they add another shunt inductor. Okay, having the emittance of minus j1.7 okay, in parallel. Okay, what will be the effect if all these three components are combined together? Okay, so let's understand firstly in terms of the mathematical way. So over here, I need to consider all these three all in parallel. So before I start, okay, I like to compare so-called this capacitor and inductor. Okay, I look at their magnitude. Okay, I know that inductor has a significant 
so called uh, magnitude as over the capacitor. So therefore, over here, I know that the resulting outcome will be 1.7 minus 0 0.4, which is 1.3. Okay, which means that this 1.2 will be still intact. These two will be combined, and basically the outcome will be an inductor because you can see that they has a higher so called magnitude, and hence the outcome is basically an inductor minus J1.3. So this is a mathematical way to compute the emittance. Okay, so over here you can see that the emittance is in short is 1.2 minus J1.3. Okay, so this is the outcome for the emittance. And if you need to get your impedance, you just need to do. 1 over 1.2 minus J1.3, and you will have the impedance value. Okay, but over here, we are more concerned how we can actually use Smith chart to do this. Okay, again, as I highlight over here, you can see that this is a emittance chart. If you still remember, emittance charts look typically like this as compared to the impedance. So therefore, I know that this is actually an emittance charge. Okay, so since I know that this is an emittance charge, I will start to plot this value here. Okay, you can imagine that it's the same approach when we actually do in term of the impedance charge. So this is 1.2. Okay, I will basically looking at this line over here. So I will look for 1.2, okay, which is here. So this is the 1.2. So I draw this 1.2 here. So next over here, okay, I saw the value of plus J0.4. Okay, remember for emittance charge, if it's a plus, which means that it's actually below the resistivity line. So over here is 0 0.4. So I look for 0 0.4, which typically is the line here. So basically the two line meets. So basically this is the point, okay, which is 1.2 plus J 0 0.4 as illustrated over here. So this is the point, which is the effective emittance of these two items added together. Okay, so now what I actually do is basically I actually introduce a shunt inductor over having a magnitude of minus J 1.7. So how can I actually do? Okay, remember over here, I add in a shunt inductor. So I take a look over here. If I add in a shunt inductor, basically they flow in this way. So if you look over here, shunt inductor is basically they are moving up and in a anti-clockwise. As you can see here, I'm moving up and also anti-clockwise. So basically this is when I actually add in the shunt inductor, the effect will be moving up and in a anti-clockwise direction. So I'm ready to do this question. So basically, I'm going to move up in an anti-clockwise direction. How much to move? Okay, basically, will be this whole thing moving will be 1.7. So over here, I know that from here to here will be 0 0.4. So once I move 0 0.4, I left 1.3 more to move. So basically, I move another 1.3 over here. So this will be so-called the resultant emittance value. Again, if you need to get the impedance value, what you need to do is simply just 1 over 1.2 minus J1.3, then you will be able to obtain the final impedance value of these three elements adding together. So hopefully, it is now much more clearer. Okay, so over here, I like to highlight the distinguish what I have discussed on the part three series. Okay, on part three series, all are using impedance charge since I'm using impedance. But for this case here, I'm using admittance because the item that add onto it will be a shunt element. Okay, for this case, it's a shunt inductor. And you actually take a look how I actually solve this in a Smith chart. Okay, so let's do another example in order to understand better. So this is another example that I'm going to discuss. Again, I'm given the emittance. Okay, so the way how we actually calculate all this okay, is more or less the same as example 4. Okay, but what I want to highlight is basically this time round, I'm adding a shunt capacitor having a emitter value of plus J2.5. Okay, so basically for capacitor, okay, if you use the emittance, they will have a plus J characteristics. Okay, so how can we actually solve this in a mathematical way? Okay, again, for emittance, when I have this form, which means that actually this component and this component, they are actually connected in parallel, okay, which is illustrated here. So over here, you can see that this is 0 0.6 okay, minus J1.6. So what I introduced will be a shunt capacitor having a value of plus J2.5. So I'm tasked to find the final impedance of these three connected in parallel. 
Okay, so again, I take a look on these two magnitude. Okay, which one is more significant? Okay, from here I can see that capacitor having 2.5 is more significant as compared to the inductor of 1.6. So the final outcome I know will be a capacity effect. So again, how much will be the magnitude? I will be using 2.5 minus 1.6, which has an outcome of 0 0.9, which is illustrated here. So the final emittance will be 0 0.6 plus J 0 0.9. Okay, again, like I told you earlier on, if I need to find my final impedance, will be simply 1 over 0 0.6 plus J 0 0.9. And therefore, I will be able to obtain the final impedance of combining these three elements all in parallel. However, for this case, again, the emphasis is how to utilize Smith chart to do this. Okay, so let's take a close look how I actually brought this point onto the Smith chart. Okay, over here, okay, the first thing I'm supposed to do will be to do it on a 0 0.6. Okay, on a Smith chart, again, before I do anything on a Smith chart, I'd like to highlight that this is actually a admitted chart. Okay, please don't confuse between admitted charge and impedance charge. As you can see, as I told you, the circles. Okay, so from here, I conclude that this is actually a admitted charge. So how to start? Okay, so basically, uh, firstly, I will find the number 0 0.6 along so-called the resistivity line. Okay, so basically from this resistivity line, I can see that this is 0 0.5. So over here is roughly 0 0.6. Okay, so next, okay, I need to plot minus J. And again, this is the emitter. When I actually has a minus J, I know that it will be above the resistivity line. Okay, so it will be above the resistivity line. Okay, roughly over here, you can see that this is uh, 1 and this is 2. Over here, roughly will be 1.6. So therefore, with the combination of 0 0.6 and also the 1.6, minus 1.6, I actually found this line, which is indicated over here. So this point here is simply the effect of these two components added in parallel, which is 0 0.6 minus J1.6. Okay, you can see from here. Okay, please keep this in mind. This is actually a emittance rather than impedance. So now, okay, I actually need to introduce a shunt capacitor having this magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude is 2.5. So again, okay, you can refer to this chart here. I need to introduce shunt capacitor. Okay, so you can see this is basically shunt capacitor. And you can see that shunt capacitor actually implement by using down and actually a clockwise. So you can see that this is actually down and clockwise. So I'm ready to do this question. So I have this point here. So I need to move down in a clockwise direction. And how much I need to move will be 2.5. Okay, will be 2.5. So again, from here to here, I move all the way to the so-called the resistivity line. Okay, this will be 1.6. I will be moving total 1.6. Okay, I have left another 0 0.9 0 .9 to move. So I move another 0 0.9. So therefore, this will be my emittance value when I actually combine these three items, okay, which is 0 0.6 plus J 0 0.9. And again, if you need to convert them into impedance, what you need to do is simply just 1 over 0 0.6 plus J 0 0.9. You will be able to find the final impedance value here. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, before I end, I'd like to highlight a few points when you actually do this on a Smith chart. Always be very careful to know and be able to distinguish whether it's impedance or emittance charts. Remember for impedance, okay, for plus J, okay, basically they will be above the resistivity line and minus J will be below the resistivity line. As for emittance, okay, anything that is above so-called the resistivity line, okay, it will be a minus component, minus J component. And anything below the resistivity line will be a plus J component. So please keep this in mind so that you will avoid all the careless mistakes when you actually do this on the Smith chart. However, before I end, I'll say that actually Smith chart is more properly used when we actually do impeder matching. If you do impeder matching on a Smith chart, I think that technically this is the best way to introduce Smith chart is how to do an impeder matching on the Smith chart rather than moving this. As you can see that I actually can done 
all this easily in a mathematical way rather than through the smith chart okay but later on when you see that i actually do an impeter matching using a smith chart it is actually much more easier and much more practical okay so with this i like to end my discussion thank you so much guy thank you and see you soon bye bye